here's a segment from a recent Gun Talk Radio episode. You can listen to all the Gun Talk Radio podcasts however you tune in, or check out guntalk.com for more. All right, we're back with you. Tom Gresham, it is Gun Talk, because we talk about guns, and really all things that have to do with guns, uh, shooting, hunting, self-defense, protection, safety, training, going out to the range, introducing people to shooting, doing all sorts of stuff. Uh, I'm joined right now by another of the Gun Talk team. Kevin Jarnigan joins us right now. What you doing, KJ? I'm, I'm trying to hang in there. It's uh, Hunting seasons are coming up, and we're moving into the new building. You're, so You're kind of a hunting fool, too, a hunting <laughs> monster. But, yeah, the, I'm, we're sitting in this. I, I'm telling you, this is a world-class facility. I was trying to explain. you got this incredible TV studio, and then, like, 50 yards from us just outside, you've got shooting ranges where you can shoot live ammo outside, and then you got, like, 4,000 feet of indoor shoot house. It, it's crazy. It's it, it's one of the best things that to happen uh, for gun talk. I mean, just for the amount of uh, people we're going to be able to educate out of this building right. is going to be amazing. Well, and there's, to my knowledge, there's nothing like this anywhere where you can have TV studio, media production, classroom, shooting range, so you can you can have the instructional video shot here. You can actually shoot videos, and you're going to be doing this, of classes. Yes, uh, and that's one of the big things about it is that we're going to be able to pass that learning on, um, I think. And and to be in a studio like this where we can we can talk about the guns, then go test them, and then right. come back and really evaluate them. Uh, it's it's just, there's nothing out there like it, and I think you hit the nail on the head right there. Exactly. Tell you what, I, I want to talk about this, the long-range class you just went to, what you were shooting, but let's hold on for that for right now, because we've got Thomas called down on two out of Columbus, Ohio. Hey, Thomas, you're on Gun Talk. What, were, what is it you just did? Yeah, so I introduced some friends who were first-time shooters to trap shooting. Oh. Uh, they recently moved here from New York, uh, so they described themselves as fish out of water uh, yeah. coming to Ohio. Right. Uh, yeah, so well, afterwards, uh, they enjoyed it so much. Uh, one, because I brought a 12-gauge because, you know, cheap ammo and does a great job. I also brought my 410 because just in case they were a little recoil shy, I mean, that's the best thing for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so how did uh, it they go? They loved it so much, we, they insisted we immediately uh, go to, uh, they suggested Cabela's. And we hadn't picked up a shotgun for them. It was a, a Winchester SXP Upland. I mean, they liked the style of and the looks, and it was a pretty nice price. But they were just amazed how fast and easy the process was to do everything here. I mean, there's just like, what do you mean there's no registration or anything? Cause, like, Because they're not in minutes, New York. Like, that didn't seem right. <laughs> welcome to America. <laughs> exactly. That's, I told them welcome to Ohio, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of the same kind of a thing. Well, of course, for those who don't know, Ohio – is probably the center of the trap shooting universe and, and has been for decades. Because uh, when the Grand American, you know, was in Ohio at Vandalia for so many years, and the Trap Shooting Hall of Fame, I think, is still there. So I don't know that one. I'm not too involved in the sport. I go out for just, mostly just recreation every once right. in a while, but I'll take your word for it. Okay, very cool. And then I understand you also have a range report for us on a pistol that I have not shot yet. Yeah, I didn't even know about it until about three weeks ago. Um, so a little backstory: I've uh, I entered, or fired the uh, Sig P365 and nine mm when it first came out. Absolutely loved it. The first few seconds, I picked up and held it. I mean, my hand is just perfect for it. It fits okay. most comfortably than any other pistol. Right. Uh, so uh, a little while ago, I also do a lot of uh, bicycling, and I got into an accident, and uh, my wrist took a lot of the grunt. And right now, anything that's really harsh and snappy, it doesn't feel too great. So mm. uh, smaller calibers are, or just softer hitting things where I'm aiming at. So, okay. Uh, yeah, so I was in the gun store, and I found this P365. It looks just like the 9 mil, but it's chambered in 380. I'm like, mm-hmm, that's right. weird. Like just some weird thing that just someone made in a garage? Like, no, that, that's... They actually made that. Like it's official and everything. And I mean, the feature that comes with them I mean, it has both the uh, the front and rear sights are both tritium night sights. I mean, it has the rail so you can mount the light. I mean, it's the sig rail, so you have to get the thing, the optics right. or the light accordingly. Uh, but because of the same frame as the really popular nine mil version, I mean, there's a world of holsters and aftermarket things already ready to go for it. And is my the, favorite part of it is that it actually is red dot ready. It does not require removing oh. the rear sight. The slide is actually milled. So an optic can sit just a couple millimeters in front of the the, the rear sight. Okay, so you, you shot get that the, gun. You know the true coat when it's red dots. 
Yeah, I've uh, I've I've spent some time behind that gun. I absolutely love it. And what you're saying about you know having a wrist injury and being a little bit recoil adverse when it comes to like protecting your body, mm-hmm. uh, it's a great thought, and especially one that marries so well from what you used to be sh- you're used to. Um, I think that's one of the best things that you could do. And man, you got lucky there, didn't you? How is the slide? Yeah. Is it easier to rack than the nine millimeter? It is a little bit, yeah, because I mean it's three eighths. It, it's uh, you know there's not much kick, so they had to lighten the spring a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, they also, uh, I mean, it's the same slide. You could tell they took the nine mil slide and just they drilled out some holes in it just to make it a little bit lighter, so the round could have an easier time cycling it. Right. Um, I did learn that uh, really a lot like significantly lighter loads, like like sixty grain bullets. It does not like those. It, it stoves pipes almost every yeah, single one of yeah. them. It needs more so like 90 grains enough is what you're going to stick with. Okay, so this is weird because before you got on during the break, KJ and, were actually, and I were actually talking about 380s and talking about uh-huh. ammo, self-defense ammo for them, and we got an idea. KJ? And I, th- I thought it, he mentioned this to me the other day in the hall, and I was like, that's the the smartest thing because we're talking about I'm I'm heading to Alaska and I'm going to have these uh some hard cast bullets and he says, "Well, what about in a 380 going to some hard cast bullets?" I was like, "Yeah, you're getting the you would get the penetration that you need." Right? Whereas if you go to those lighter loads, you know, you may not get that penetration. Yeah, we keep trying to chase it maybe in the wrong direction if, if this makes any sense. Uh Thomas, because we're we try to go to lightweight bullets to get the velocity up high enough to get the hollow points in a 380 to expand. Mm-hmm. Now we got a lightweight bullet that's not going to penetrate that much. What if we said, okay, just forget penetration or forget expansion altogether. Just don't worry about it. I want a 38 mm-hmm. caliber hole, but I want it to be a long 38 caliber hole and go to a hard cast lead bullet for that. Interesting. Now you got him thinking. Yeah. They, <laughs> yeah. Everybody's going, wait a minute. Let me, let me, let me run this <laughs> around a minute. To try out. <laughs> because, you know, all right, it's winter. You got, you know, bad guys wearing heavy clothes. You know, you may have to shoot through a couple of three layers of clothing. You know, is that uh, super lightweight, super fast 380 bullet going to do that? You're shaking your head. I'm shaking my head. No, there's no way. And not get the penetration and the results that you want. Right. You better have a lot of rounds in that gun. Yeah, uh, so I'm just thinking, and I got this idea from our buddy Dan, who said, you know, he's carrying uh, he's carrying buffalo bore, but you know, there's several companies making them. Buffalo bore's got them. Uh, um, Does Double Tap offer them? Uh, yeah, Double Tap. Yeah. I think has a hard cast lead bullet in 380. Yeah. You may have to poke around and find it. Not going to be easy to find, but you're not going to need a lot of them either. The other thing is you're going to, and back to your point, Thomas, is that you definitely want to make sure you run a couple of mags through your gun to make sure you will feed them because hard cast lead bullets can be problematic for some semi-autos. So you're going to check that out. But That's right, yeah. I kind of like the idea of it. Yeah, I, lo- I love the idea of it just from a performance standpoint. Um, and you, got, lo- you got to get out the range here and shoot them. you got all the stuff you need to test them and shoot them into water and everything. I've got everything I need right here. <laughs> I can step outside the door. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Well, good. Day. Hey, congratulations on introducing those folks to shooting. That is very cool, man. Thank you. In fact, actually, just one last quick thing is for Spotify, actually, a small request. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I listen to it on Spotify, usually the podcast. And if you can actually upload it the opposite order, just because I've fiddled, fiddled with the uh, the way it plays. And so right now, if I, like, I go from episode one you, to two, right. when I finish episode two, it'll go back to one. All right, here's so. the deal. But depending on which service you use for the podcast, they load differently. And so every week we get several people say, you've loaded them in the wrong order. And then occasionally we're flipping around and then the other people say, no, you loaded them in the wrong order. So it is, we load them up the way it's supposed to. And then some of the services, whether it's, let's see, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, I don't know what they all are, but you know, it just, it just is. I appreciate the input, and I am sorry for the hassle, but I think we're probably going to have to stay, keep doing what we're doing there. There you go. And just kind of hunt it down and find them in the order you need them in. KZ, don't go anywhere, okay? I'll I'll stay right here. Good deal. All right, we'll be right back. 866-TALK-GUN. All right, back with the 866-TALK-GUN. We'll get you in here. Talking with uh, KJ, Kevin Jarnigan. 
Uh, Kevin, you, you just loaded up what nine rounds? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I was listening to you right before I was coming in here, and you're talking about reloading and find the right round for the right gun, and that's what I'm doing right now for my boys. Um, oh, okay. They're going to be shooting the Sig Cross this year, and I wanted to I wanted to develop a load for that gun for them. 6.5 Creedmoor? 6.5 Creedmoor. I'm uh, Hornady Brass. I'm using the new Hornady CX bullet in 120 okay. grains. But now, after talking with you, mm -hmm. of course, the great enabler strikes again. <laughs> I've ordered some 140 grain Nosler ballistic tips. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> those will work too. They all work. So... So that's what I've been working on, and just load up nine rounds, and, you know, we can step away from here from the studio right. and go right into the range, I mean, and I can test them out. You, you, 50 yards from where we're sitting right here in yes. the studio, you could be shooting at the 100-yard range. Oh, yeah. It's it's just that easy. So you're getting ready for an Alaska hunt. I'm getting ready for Alaska, and I'm going to chase blacktail and reindeer and hopefully not get chased by grizzly bear on, okay. Kodi on Kodiak and, Island. And you went like uber classic on the caliber. I did. And I, you know what? I got made fun of in a long-range course. Because you uh, had the 270 Winchester. I had the 270 Winchester. I got called old man the whole week. <laughs> <laughs> so, But no, the thinking behind it was was to take your hunting rig to a class, to a long-range class, and see where your performance is and to see where your gun's performance is. And, and say, okay, what are the limits? Yeah, and I found out real quick. What would you find out? Oh, that uh, 270 runs out of legs pretty far down range. What, 800? Down right at 800, it started to run out. Yeah. And Wait, it just, it wasn't, you know, and, and the combination of, you know, I, I took my hunting ammo. I wasn't shooting match ammo. This okay. is all gear. That I'm taking on the hunt because Use I want to know it. The Remington, uh, the, the tipped core lock? Yep, the core lock tipped, which okay. great results. Yeah. Um, you know, it shoots really well downrange. Um, but, it, you know, when that brought, was brought out, 400 yards was a long shot. And this thing would handle 400 yards fine. Oh, yeah. And, and the reality is for the hunting you're doing as opposed to shooting steel targets, 800 yeah. yards is probably just fine. Oh, yeah. 800 yards is fine. But, but you know, when you go through a class like that, and you've been to plenty of them, you start to see what your limits are. You yeah, know, and, and, and we're not only shooting off prone. You know, right. we shoot off of barricades. We shoot standing, kneeling, uh, and seated. And so, you know, I kind of came up with a, okay, this is where I'm comfortable at in these conditions. Okay. You know, from like this structure. All right. All right. If I said, okay, you got to shoot from uh, over a log or shoot from a needling position, what do you think is your range limit? With that gun, I am right at about 350, 400. Yeah, that's realistic. Yeah. Okay. And, it, and, and you know, back to FTW Ranch, because we've been out there. Right. They talk about acceptable, acceptable reticle movement. Right. ARM. And so that's kind of basically what that is, is it's where your reticle is moving moving on the target. If it's off of the critter, you need to change something. Yes. You've got to get a, a steadier rest or get closer or slow down to your heart you know, oh, slows yeah. down or whatever it is. But if it's wobbling off the target, don't pull the yep. trigger. Don't pull the trigger. And it's it's not worth wounding an animal. And, and that's what I went to that class to find out was my limits with that equipment. Um, but, with every, but everything right, 800 yards. But at that point, you're lo you're losing gas and also probably getting pushed around by the wind a fair amount. Oh yeah, getting pushed by a lot of wind. Because <laughs> you don't really have the high BC bullets. No, not high BC at all. Um, and you know, going through a class like that, I was shooting a Savage 110 Ultralight. Nice. So this is a proof research barrel. So that barrel is going to be heating up pretty quick. It's not made for <laughs> long range classes. It is know, not. Or competition. But no. boy, I was burning through them. Now, but that'll be nice when you're going up and down those hills, because people who haven't been, they don't know. Kodiak is just mountains everywhere. Yeah, I'm 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 excited about it. I've been getting in shape for it, uh, which is great. Uh, it makes gives me a reason to get in you shape. Know, you can't outrun the bear. I can't. But all I got to do is outrun my cameraman. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got to do. You know, and and if we're looking at that, I'm looking pretty good because um, I don't think he's hit the trail as hard as I there have. There you go. That's right. That's, uh, that's going to be so much fun. It'll it'll be fun. Um, and I I like the prep. I like the shooting. I like getting to know new gear. Uh, we're taking. We've got a lot of. Um, it's a. It is a sponsored hunt, and it all started with. I just wanted to go Kodiak and hunt. That's mm -hmm. all I wanted to do. And they start I, calling your buddies and say, "Well, we'll go. Or we'll yeah. join you." So and you know, got savage involved. You got different companies. 
in the process of that, you, you're the one who told me this week that you know, you're talking to Hodgson. They said, look, man, heads up. Uh-huh. We've got some powders that are just going to be hard to get. Yeah. And we're not talking about for like for two months. We're talking about maybe for a year or two, some you, of these powders. A year or two. And that, and that started scaring me because, you know, when I started reloading, gosh, about a year ago, um, I started just getting what I can yep. um, and just starting there, you know, just messing with stuff. And you talk about, you talked earlier in the show about having a hard copy of your oh, reloading, loading manual. your loading yeah. manual. Yeah. And I've got, I carry, I carry one out on the range with me ah. just because I want to verify. I want to go, right. go back over stuff. I want to look, okay, where am I? What's wrong? What, what should I be doing? Um, and it's, like you said, it's fun to just flip through. Are you using a chronograph? I am using a chronograph. Which one are you using? Um, well, I switched between the lab radar right. and the magneto speed. Okay. Um, Two good ones, but they operate very differently. Very differently. Um, and they're pretty consistent, yeah. I, I've noticed. Um, but, you know, you go to all these different long-range courses, and they have different philosophies. Um, every trainer kind of has their their deal that they like to, you know, they show you that's sure. different. You right, know, that's, right. that's what it's They got about. our system. Yeah, this is our system. Now, you know, you <laughs> came to class to get this, uh, and it, which is great. Uh, but I asked one of the instructors, like, are you worried about, do you worry at all about muzzle velocity with, you know, how you do things? Mm-hmm. He goes, nope. Don't even think about muzzle velocity. Anymore. Don't even care. That's 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 very old school. And being an old school guy, an old guy who's been reloading for 50 plus yeah. years, we used to try to get the maximum velocity because that got us the maximum range because we were guessing at the distances. Right. And that helped us with the guessomatic. But now that you can just zap it with the laser, you go, that is exactly 427 yards. And you can either dial it or depending on your scope, you can hold. You can hold. But, you know, right where it is. The elevation is not a big deal now. No, not it, it's not a big deal at all. And and how he operated and how he went through it was fascinating. Um, and as long as you have your two hundred and your three hundred and your four hundred dope, um, you're don't man, sweat the velocity. Don't sweat the velocity. Don't worry about it because the Us- math works. Using good bullets is more important. Oh yeah. And you know, one of the things about there are high BC bullets for the uh, two seventy, but. You gotta switch barrels and go with a faster twist. Yes. Rate. Yeah. And this, I think, I want to say the Savage One Ten. So I think it's probably one, one in ten. One in ten. Yeah. yeah. So you're kind of limited. One fifty, one sixty, maybe. There, are, there are some one seventy grain bullets out there, but you're gonna have to go to a one and eight twist. Oh, there's those. no way I could stabilize that. No, you can. No. no you'd, uh, you'd be throwing and, knuckleballs. Yeah. And you know, and we're shooting suppressed, which is the the oh. the the gentleman's way to do it. Yes. Civilized. <laughs> it's, there it's, you it's go. Civilized. So are you gonna use a suppressor while you're hunting? I am. I, I you're, think you're, you're willing to carry the weight. I'm, oh, a hundred percent. I'm not worried about weight at this point. You, you've hunted with suppressors a good bit. Yeah, and that, that's only. I view it as this, and and everybody talks about the bears on Kodiak, and every time they hear a shot, it's a dinner belt. That's not the way it is. No. That's not the way it is. They're not that – I've seen them. They're not that hungry. Right. (laughs) They're not starving. Right. (laughs) Um, You know, and and so having – but what that does for me is the non-directional sound. Ah. Um, And so – when a shot breaks, you know, with a, you know, flash hider on it or right. a, a muzzle device on it, um, the report of the rifle, you can hear, okay, it's from that way. With a suppressor, it makes it more difficult to pick the direction of that sound out, right. which also gives you the ability to have multiple, could have multiple follow-up shots. That's what I was going to ask you. Does it find that it doesn't spook animals? No. They, they they know something happened. They just don't know where it happened. Huh. Um, it's just like you know, a oil field truck running down the road and it hits you know hits a bump and all of a sudden like they just kind of look around it's and there's another sound. It's just another sound. Um, it, and that happened a couple of times uh, yeah. on hunting this year. Is my buddy missed one with my gun, um, and I was sitting right there with I was sitting right with him. Right. And he goes he goes I missed and I go I know. He'll be back. Like, and the deer literally walked 10 steps, came back in, and he shot him. Really? Yeah. So he just wasn't spooked. Wasn't spooked. Crazy. No. And, you know, and, and get, taking your boys out, using suppressors on those guns. Oh, they, will, they won't hunt with anything else. That, I mean, well, anymore. Once, once, once you get used to it. Yeah, because they don't, they, you know, because they want the, you want to put hearing protection on your kids, people. That's, that's important. Yeah. And they've gotten the habit of wearing the hearing protection. 
but now when they shoot suppressed, they don't have to wear them. Yeah, which is great for hunting. Oh, yeah. Hold on a second here. We've got to take a quick break here. We're talking with Kevin Jarnigan. If you uh, have a comment, a question, or you want to join the conversation, share stories. We're all about that. Our number is 866-TALK-GUN, or you can do it the easy way. Call me at Tom Talk Gun. That's because that's me. Tom Gresham, it is Gun Talk. Be sure to join us here. Also, check us out on Twitter. I am at Gun Talk there. We'll be right back. All right, back with you here, talking with uh, Kevin Jarnigan from the Gun Talk team. KJ, how long have you been at Gun Talk now? Oh, my goodness. Like five years. Holy cow. Yeah. <laughs> And I, I, I haven't worked a day, yeah. a day, a day more than that. Like, just, just working 12 hours a day, and dude, it's not work. This no. isn't work. We no. get to sit here and talk about guns. We get to shoot guns. We get to like educate folks and and get education ourselves. Oh yeah, we get an amazing stream of people coming through here who know everything. And I was just talking about the Billbox show and what a cool thing that is. Oh my goodness, people are going to be so excited for that. We had so much fun on set with that. Yeah. Um, that's another one of those instances that just doesn't feel like work. <laughs> yeah. Just long days, a lot, a lot of long days. Oh, it's long days, but you know the family understands and they Why they not? fully support me and yeah, we, we just go. enjoy it. There you go. All right, got a call coming in here. Mark is on four out of Elko, Nevada. Hey, Mark, what you got there? What are you looking for? I'm looking for a flashlight attachment for the Ruger LCP. Do you have the LCP or the LCP-2? The LCP. Okay. Uh, we were kind of poking around here, and KJ, you found the uh, the uh, Viridian, but that's for the LCP-2. Yeah, uh, well, the the Viridian uh, Reactor TL Gen 2, it's a, uh, it's a light for the Ruger LCP. The folks over at Viridian are great, great people. Uh, they do a lot of good things. Um, Does and then Crimson I, Trace have anything? Uh, Crimson Trace did have one for the LCP-2, and it was on their Laser Guard uh, mm. series. So, um, and I'm, I, I, I haven't messed with the LCP in a while because we've been having so much fun with the LCP-2 right, <laughs> or right. the LCP Max. Uh, those, sure. that's another good one. Um, but no, uh, Viridian would be a gr- great option for that. Hey, Mark, do you carry a? a do, do you carry a regular flashlight with you when you're uh, carrying? Yeah, I always have a flashlight on my belt, and I try to keep one in my pocket. Good. That's it's right. kind of hard to have a flashlight in your hand while you have a pistol on the other, and it's I, dark in yeah. the house, you know? Yep, we, we agree. Well, you know what this means, don't you? This is good news. You get to buy a new gun. <laughs> Why would I want to buy another gun? The LCP. What? I don't want to buy another gun. I just the LCP. I'm done. I I got more than enough guns. I'm all gunned out. Oh, there's no such thing. <laughs> well, I understand what you're okay. saying, though. I understand what you're saying. Well, as far as I can tell, you might check the uh, Viridian. And also the, uh, looks like, oh, there's one. It does have a uh, light Gen 2 for the Ruger LCP. You just found that. Yep. Yeah. They, so they, Brilliant has one of those. Yep. It'd be a good option for you. The, the re, it's called the Reactor TL. TL. Okay. Well, I'm pretty, I'm pretty oh, sure that. Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's, uh, TL stands for totally legit. <laughs> okay. Uh, I got a question for you guys. Sure. You're talking about the LCP2 and the LCP Max. I thought those were uh, the same pistol. Are they not? Or KJ? No, they're not. the uh, the The Max is their. It's their version of the. Um, it's basically holds a lot more. Um, it's a ten plus one it's, of three eighty. It's kind of a, st- a staggered or a, almost a double stack. Uh, so you got more ammo in your LCP. And it's the. It is the same footprint as the LCP two, which is right. completely amazing. It's unbelievable they could do that. Yeah, the LCP Max would be, if I were buying one now, that's what I would get. Yeah, without they, a doubt. Because they do have an option for a, a, a 12 round magazine as well. So, right. I mean, 13 rounds of 380. Yeah. I mean, I guess. Yeah, that, that's kind of a get, that, that's get off of me medicines. That, that, is that is very much get off me medicine. Yeah, but I would, yeah, check it out, uh, Viridian, and uh, they will have that light for you. Appreciate the call, sir. Thank you. So uh, we were talking with uh, Chris when he was in here earlier. Uh-oh. We were talking about <laughs> appendix carry. He came in here carrying 
open carry at three o'clock position. I'm going to say, who is this? <laughs> That's you know, not who, the same guy. Who are, who are you? <laughs> right? Because he's an appendix guy. And you're an appendix guy. I'm an appendix guy, and I've always, I've. Yeah, I wasn't always appendix guy. I used to I used to carry a 1911, believe it or not. Really? <laughs> yes, I did. I carried a Smith and Wesson uh, uh, 1911, and absolutely loved it. It was one of their custom shop guns, and oh man, just a beautiful. Actually, it was the gun sight model. Was it the Scandium? Yeah. Uh, no. Oh, okay. No, gosh, no. Oh, I, nice. I like I like my hands. <laughs> <laughs> too, I like too my light. wrist. <laughs> too light. Okay. But no, huh? I started carrying appendix uh, just. Working on it, you know, I I I would dabble in it for a little bit on practice, right? Getting comfortable with it without, you know, without rounds in the gun, just practicing draw stroke. Because we all have that. It's like, wow, it's pointing at it's, my ephemeral. It's pointing yeah. at the junk. And then yada yada yeah, yada. There's a lot of important I, I, stuff down there. How'd you work your way through all that? I just I just told myself just to get over it, you know, and and this is how I want to carry. Have and, a good holster. Yep. Oh, have a good belt. Uh, That's probably and and. Oddly enough, you've got to find the right pants because uh, belt loops are all different. They come in oh, all different right. sizes. You've got to find one where the belt loops are in the right place. Right. You have to find – That's it's it's interesting, but I found that um, there's a couple uh, companies that, that have, like, their good, like, belt loops, like, spacing-wise up okay. front. Right. Um, cool does a good job, and that's K-U-H-L. Um, but they do a really good job of spacing those out so you can – so if you're riding in a car or something, you can slide it over and, you know, you can adjust it. I'll tell you how important it. that is, even going way back, way back, Bill Jordan, in his book, nope, Second Place Winner, he talks about having his wife remove belt loops uh, and move them on his pants to get them in the right place. Way back in the old days. That's, man, that's something that's to consider. That's that's some, that it is important, and that's something that. to consider. Um, I just don't have a, 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 seamstress. a seamstress at home, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, not, I'm no good at that. But, interesting. But, but, uh, okay, here's a, this is an interesting one. Rex is in uh, New Mexico on one with an idea to talk about 380s. Hey, Rex, you're up. Hi there. Good, yes, to, good to talk with you today. Sure, how can we help you? Yeah, I got you. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, you all were talking about uh, switching to 380 because of uh, wrist issues and stuff like that and not right. worrying about the bullet not being able to penetrate. Mm -hmm. Well, the Hornady makes a bullet for that. It's a, it's a critical defense bullet, 380, that's got a hollow point, but it's got a um, really hard rubber insert into the point. Right. Right. The flexible tip expanding, FTX. And uh, what it's supposed to do is go through your uh, denims and your leather mm -hmm. and then start to flatten out. Ah, okay. It's well, supposed I'm to be I'm able to penetrate because of that flexible uh, tip uh, technology there that uh, doesn't get out of the way very fast. And they make a light version of that, right? Uh, a light version, I'm not sure. A lightweight uh, version of the bullet? Yeah. I'm talking 380. A critical defense. Uh, like it's like a light, a light version of it, I believe. Oh, you mean light oh. recoil? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah, I think they do. But I think it's 95 grain. Huh, but okay. That's another That's a good, another good option. I mean, if as long as it's performing and it's advertised, and I've never seen critical defense not do what it's not supposed work. to do, right. you know? Now, this is what right. be one of those deals. And that, I, got uh, them, I got them some for my daughter because, you know, uh, if you, and they don't penetrate all the walls too far and, and go into your neighbor's home and stuff like that. Well, there's that. Uh, I would say, you know, if you wanted to, for anybody that wanted to, and besides that, it's just fun, uh, <laughs> take your ammo out, get you a bunch of one-gallon water jugs, which is what we kind of standardized on now, and uh, shoot some of these loads into them, maybe even put a piece of denim over it and shoot through that. And compare different loads, and then you can make up your own mind on what works for you, right? Yeah. There you go. Hey, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Gun Talk. So, KJ, you're headed for Alaska. Not just Alaska. You're going to Kodiak Island, home of the Kodiak brown bear. The big bears. Yeah. So <laughs> you're obviously going to be carrying a rifle, but are you also going to carry a bear handgun? Oh, 100%. And I went up there one time before hunting, hunting bears, but not brown bears. Um, and for brown bear protection, I was carrying a 460. And this time I'm going back, I'm shooting an XDM Elite from Springfield Armory in 10 millimeter. In 10 millimeter. Yeah. 
Uh, so, okay. So more, I'm I'm thinking if yeah, I encounter something, more rounds. Because the 460 is effective, but man, it's big. I mean, it's yeah. big and it's heavy. It's and a it was, lot. And it was a, it was, you know, it was a small one. So it, oh, you it, got the small one. Yeah. Oh, the one where you start force fires with it. Right. Because when right. it goes off, everything in front of you catches fire. Right. It's so it's a big fire. That's almost one of those ones I want to throw it to the bear and I say, here, you shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> Or, or basically, <laughs> well, you, you shoot the bear and you have skinned him and burned yes. all the fur off and everything else. So yeah, by the time he gets to me. The fireball. Uh, you, but no. you, you got to take one of those things out and shoot some video, slow motion video at night or oh, at dusk. Gosh. With, with one of those I, the I haven't done that yet. I need oh, to. That'd be fun. Oh, yeah. But but no, I'm. I, you know, when I was set back and I looked at w- what my options were, I've heard of guys carrying 9 millimeters because that's what they shoot really well. They shoot really fast. And I'm like... I, I got to have a little bit more meat behind it. I'm with you, man. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, want, I want to have some punch. Uh, to me, a 10 millimeter is barely enough. Just, yeah. I mean, I I would rather have a 44 Magnum. I'd rather have a 454 Casul. Yeah. You know, yeah, 454 uh, would be a, boy, that'd be good. You know, that and a two and a half inch barrel. Yeah. You could carry that. Ruger's yeah. got one of those. It'd be, it, I, I don't think it adds a lot of extra weight, but at that point, you're not worried about weight. That's one of those those areas, you know, these yeah. guys go in the back country and everything else. They think, they're, oh, I got to get cutting the handle off the toothbrush. That yeah, kind of deal, like, getting the weight down. I don't, don't, don't. When it comes to your personal protection or your medical stuff, don't skimp on it. Like right. that, that's not the place to start going. Well, I'll just carry my, you know, the three sixty five. You you pick your small gun. Right. That's not the place you want to do it. Well, and the reality is, if you got your rifle with you, that's what you're going to use. Yes. But it doesn't take a lot of imagination to come up with a scenario where you either don't have the rifle with you or you got your one shot there and now you're crawling around in the brush and yep. trying to, you know, whatever. You've lost well, your rifle. I think the more important question we have to ask is how you carry it. Uh, um, and that, because you, you and I had a conversation. You're wearing a backpack. This, wearing a, ba- a big pack, like right. an internal frame pack. You've got your gun, you know, slung on the backpack, or if you're going through all the alders and everything. And you've got your waistband on for your backpack, and that's right over, if you're wearing a regular holster, now you've covered it up. Right. So some people are wearing chest rigs. But, yep. But you're doing the binocular chest pack. Yeah, I do a, I do a uh, you know, a uh, bino harness. And so I just need I need to find a company that'll make a Molly holster. That's what I need. So if you're out there and you're a holster company, a Molly rig holster on top of your bino harness. On well, either on top or just ride ride it right below it. Okay. And that way, so on the back side of the I, and I've got the design in my head. I probably just need to just go ahead and make it. You could just have your know, hire a gun bearer to follow you around. Yeah. You know, with a pistol. <laughs> Here, you. give me the pistol right now. Yeah, I try. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I just hope his reactions are as quick as mine. <laughs> that's when you turn around and there he goes. Yep. He just ran off <laughs> with my gun. With your gun. <laughs> Actually, that's happened to people in Africa with a gun yeah. bearer. Oh, you know, I can't imagine. You know, it's like you turn around and your gun bearer is up the tree up there with your gun. Oh, okay. No. That's why in, in Africa, I was like, no, 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 we're not doing that. I'm, I'm carrying my gun. Yeah. I w- oh, I would always have my gun. That's your lifeline. Yeah. I mean, and there, I... There's a lot of stuff there that'll eat you or, or hurt you. Oh, I can't imagine Africa. I've just never had that itch to go to Africa. And oh, there's just so... Whatever you do... Don't go. Don't go because, <laughs> I mean, it truly is cocaine for hunters. It is. It, I, once you go, it's like, oh, the, yeah... And then you say, I was wrong about everything I thought about Africa. Really? <laughs> and I, and really? I know I'm going to say that. And, and, and if I ever go, I, I will say that. But there's so many game opportunities here in North America. Yeah, but one hunt there is 10 animals. I, I know. In a week. But I always whereas, think of it like yeah. going to a McDonald's menu and going, I'll have a number one with, <laughs> with yeah. a number two. You know, and, <laughs> and the part is, it's cool. There's a lot of Africa. A lot of, you hunt in Namibia, Zimbabwe. Uh, it looks like West Texas. Oh, it, it's it's really interesting. It's kind of that's, like high dry desert kind of. I'm thing. telling you, You'd that's like it. that 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 would get in my blood quick because that's the areas that I hunt. I, I know that's your kind of deal. <laughs> You'd like that a lot. I know you would. So yeah, speaking of, I think Ryan's going to do a West Texas hunt for spiral horn. Oh, I'm going something. on that hunt. Oh, are you? Oh yeah. Oh, I'm going to make him take me. <laughs> okay, going to, uh, now a scimitar now, oryx. That's what it is. Yeah, oryx. They're, they are gorgeous animals. Oh yeah, gorgeous. Be fabulous. And, very cool and very, very tasty. I mean, yes, right. and that's, uh, I think that's the, what it goes back to is, man, there's just so much good game here that is quality meat. So last night we had burgers. We had tri-burgers. They're venison, cow, and pig. 
Uh, All ground up together. Oh, awesome. So good, wasn't it? Awesome stuff, man. Love And that's stuff. why we do it. That is why we do it. Don't go far. We'll be right back. I'm Tom Gresham. That's Kevin Jarnigan over there. This is Gun Talk, 866-TALK-GUN. Here's the breaks. Guess what we talk about? Guns, hunting, stuff. Uh, KJ, you get, you've get you been in this business for right at 20 years now because you were doing a lot of PR for gun companies before mm-hmm. you came here. Uh, so you've seen the evolution. And looking at the quality and the variety of guns that are coming through now, it's amazing, isn't it? I, it, it, it is amazing. And I, I used to think I was in the golden age of guns, but now I think I'm living it yes. right now. Yes. Um, because gun companies no longer – we used to – and. Used to it was okay. It's Shot show. Everybody's launching everything. Right now it's the entire year. Throughout the year, they're, they'll come out whenever they're ready. Yeah, and and when they're ready, they're they're ready. And I think companies are starting to get better at okay. When you can buy it is when we're going to announce it. Oh, that's a good point. It's like yeah, we were at Sig and they said yeah, we got the, the 365 uh, macro. And I said well, when's it going to be announced? They said well, you look over there. You know, you see there's 10,000 of them here. Yeah, we're making them. They're ready when, to go. when those are out in the stores is when we will announce them. It's not the old days of we'll announce it and maybe in two years we'll have them out. Well, yeah. Or, hey, we're coming down and for guns and gear, we're going to film. Okay, we filmed this gun. Oh, no, can't, not can't launching talk about it. it. <laughs> yeah. You can't launch oh, it. Wait, what? <laughs> there was one company would announce a whole bunch of really cool products at SHOT Show. And then they would wait to see which ones they actually got orders for, and those were the only ones they would make. you got to be kidding. No, that's how no. they did their, their product testing. And uh, so I learned the hard way. It's like, you know, I would say, well, here's the new what's and what's from such and yeah. such. And then it turns out they never brought it out. And we're, you know some guy on, is some guy sitting on his couch is going, hey. Oh, yeah, they're looking for it. Tom, you said. Yeah, you said this, this was out. And, yeah, well, they told me it was out. So now it's like, okay, if it's really yep. out, you know, there you yeah. go. Okay, so thinking about things, I mean, you got into chassis guns very early on. You mm-hmm. you spent tons of money on long-range, super-accurate guns, and then, of course, Ruger brings out the R- I know. You know, RPR, so you're an oh, Dang man. them. Dang, Dang them. Dang yes. them. I just spent $7,000 on a rifle. Yeah. Now I could do the same thing for 1500 bucks. Yeah, it's, it, it is amazing what they're able to do now. And, and, you know, going back to, the like, you know, if it's a MOA gun, that was it. Like yeah. it, to have an MO, a gun that's truly shot MOA, and that's up to the shooter as well. Yep. So we're a one-inch gun, and now it's like, yeah, okay, it's okay. It shoots an inch, but yeah. it's not very impressive. But now you're talking about, like, man, you if, could dial that sucker in to cover a dime. Yeah, if they're, if they're not just kind of clover leafing and yep. all the – at least touching. At the very yeah. least, all the bullet holes have to be touching. Oh, yeah. And maybe yeah. just kind of an enlarged hole while all of them yeah. going through the same place. So. But I love I love it, man. I, I I think what surprises me a lot of times, the guys will go to the range, and we see a lot of people shoot. We do. We mm-hmm. we see a lot of people shoot, and they'll go to the range, and they'll say, my gun just isn't shooting. I'm like, okay, all right. Now, what are you doing? What are you working with? And I know, like, I've seen that gun shoot. Behind a really good shooter. It's, it's the nut behind the butt plate. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. <laughs> it is. And sometimes I'm that nut. <laughs> well, yeah. And, you know, and there are days when you're better than other days. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Yeah. And and going back to the class, I mean, I, I was having a, a good day, but I was sitting next to a bunch of guys shooting PRS guns. Right. Like all these dolled out, these guns are weighing in at 14, 15 pounds. A lot easier to shoot than your lightweight hunting Mine's gun. at seven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, it's just... <laughs> So you want to get really humbled really quick is take a hunting gun to a PRS long range course and and it'll start you. Th- start but your if you process. want to get better in any of this, go take a course. That's it. That's Cause, it. Because they will teach you things that you didn't even know existed. Yeah, and I'm talking to my buddy who's going through the same thing. I'm like, just come to a course with me. And he goes, man, I just I just can't do it. I just can't do it. Why? Right. He's yeah. intimidated. Make, oh, really? He's intimidated. He's like, you go to all these courses. And I'm like, buddy. It yeah. doesn't matter. When you go there, you check your ego at the door and just open your brain and let yep. them just dump that stuff in, and you'll come out a much better shooter. 100%. Simple as that. KJ, thanks for your uh, time oh, here, man. Oh, thank you. And, uh, you know, you can check it out what KJ's been doing. Uh, Gun Talk Hunt. Oh, Gun Talk Hunt. Uh, we're Gun Talk Live. Gun Talk Nation. It- all podcast, all video, all yep. available all the time. Yep. Check it out. GunTalk.com or GunTalkTV.com. That'll work. We'll be right back in just a minute with more Gun Talk. Don't go far. Don't go far.